Jonah chapter 1 verse third verse 15 Jonah one fifteen. Jonah agreed to go and preach the Lord. Jonah, Old Testament, first chapter, verse fifteen. And also verse eight of Jonah then we go to the New Testament we read in Matthew 14 verse 13 30 15 speaks the following so they picked up Jonah and threw him into the sea and the sea ceased from the its raging and Jonah 2 verse 8 2 8 those who regard worthless idols forsake their own mercy Matthew chapter 14 verse 30, 31 and 32 speaks the following 14, 30, 31, 32 but when he saw that the that the wind was was strong, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried out, saying, "Lord, save me!" And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand, and caught him, and said to him, "O oh, you of little faith, why do you doubt?" And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Amen. We're grateful for all of us to be here in your presence, Lord. We ask for in your word that the Lord can bless us. That's why we pray. In the name of Jesus, amen. The brother may be seated. We read in the Word of God. The first moment speaks of the prophet Jonah. He heard the voice of the Lord. The Lord showed him the way, the direction, gave him a message. so that he can speak of the things that the Lord has orientated. But the Bible says that Jonah, he resolved not to obey the Lord. And verse 8 says he didn't obey from coward cowardness let your own mercy so through his own cowardness Jonah disobeys the Lord and the consequence 
he leaves it aside. The mercy that the Lord had for his life. And the Bible says, when he left to obey the Lord, he enters in a period of he goes down a city named Gop. He goes into a boat. And then, consequently, he brings trouble. There was trouble. Jonah, servant of God, and the name of Jonah, the one that was called from the Holy Spirit, he now left to hear the Lord, left to hear the Holy Spirit, and now he is bringing anguish the affliction, suffering, and giving trouble to others. Uh, us in Brazil says, when you preach your Bible about Jonah, uh, about a whale, it's a whale is a whale. About Jonah, he says the following. When the whale ate Jonah, he threw him aside and threw him out. <laughs> no one understands. And that was the situation there with Jonah. Left to hear the voice of the Lord. And the only way so that people can be saved it was to take out Jonah from that boat and Jonah himself admits this everything that's happening on this boat is because of me he had this knowledge and then everybody says to throw him off the boat. And the Bible says that the people that were with him in that boat, they were, they had great fear of God when the, when Jonah asks them to throw him into the sea the Bible says and the, those men they, they pled to God then he was a servant of God they had fear of God and they pleaded to Jonah's God they said We don't want to suffer because of this man's life. Because you, Lord. So, they make a prayer. They have fear of God. This is really interesting, brethren. The Bible says that the beginning of knowledge is fear of God. God spoke to Jonah. And Jonah did not fear. And the people that did not hear the voice of the Lord had the knowledge that he was a servant of God. They had fear of God. This is interesting. The man found out that he was 
servant of God. And then they had fear of God. They're not fearing their God. They're not being smart. I must say something to you. Christians aren't smart. And what is needed for a Christian to be smart is to hear the voice of the Lord and to obey. That's what's to be smart. God spoke, you obey. He goes, you go. Don't go. I don't go. And God said, go, Jonah. He took another path and brought all these consequences to his life and to all the people that were near him in the boat. But Jonah, he had a moment. He was there. The water He said that he remembered of God And through your eyes He said something interesting In that situation He had something there that Sometimes we don't have either. He had faith. He went into difficulties, but when the thing was complicated to his side, he had faith. He says here, all my eyes will turn to your temple of your mercy. For more that he had disobeyed, God, he gave mercy to his life. When you leave this church tonight, the mercy from the Lord is something very wonderful. When he prays to the Lord, he brings, he seeks his God. <laughs> Come once again, the second time, the Lord spoke to Jonah and said, Jonah, get out. My brethren, get out. Stand up, and I'll speak to you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And in this situation, he wants to speak to you. He wants to use it. It's for you to be standing up in, in front of him, to believe in the mercy. It's to believe that you have a place in the heaven for you. Jonah says, I sinned, I failed, I disobeyed, but I'm gonna turn to the face of the Lord. The Lord brought you here tonight for you to turn to Him. All the way in Matthew. There's a citizen named Peter. Everyone knows who Peter is. <clears throat> the Bible says that it was nighttime. 
They were in a boat. And it was the disciples of Jesus that were on the boat. A boat full of Christians. Full of servants of God. In that boat, the Bible says that there was a great storm. But it's a boat full of servants of God. Why this storm? Why the affliction? Why the anguish? Why the pain? Why the suffering? This storm couldn't be somewhere else in another boat. Why at their boat with the servants of God? Good question. Jesus. He didn't say, believe in me, you'll be saved, and everything will be blue, and everything will be great in your life. Everything's going to do well. You're not going to be sick, you're not going to be old. You're not going to have no job. You're not going to have a problem with your wife, your husband, your sons, your daughters, doesn't exist that in the Bible. Maybe people understand like that. Jesus, he says, the world will have afflictions. So, there was a boat full of servants of God, all in the same bark as the same Brazil, the same situation, the same afflictions under the same wind the same storm the same anguish the same pain the same sadness everyone had the same situation but my brethren here was a difference and all those people were in the boat were in that storm the Bible says that Jesus appeared to them Jesus went to save them Jesus came to rescue me the boat doesn't go to Jesus but Jesus goes into the boat and the Bible says that he was walking above the waters above the sea towards the boat here shows that Jesus is God he doesn't need another boat another transportation but he walked above the waters to show his power above all of nature to show that he is God that he is the Lord he is the Savior. And the Bible says, my brethren, that they're all there, afraid. What was that? The nighttime, darkness, storm like this, a person approaching from the water. People started to find this strange. Sometimes we even find it strange. The manifestations of the Lord in the middle of His church, His people. Sometimes we even doubt. Is it God that's operating? Is He coming to meet me? I will say, my brethren. And when Jesus, he gave a word, he said, it's me, don't fear, 
luta, nas dificuldades, nas provas, nas adversidades. The adversaries of this life. We are passing through a time of anguish, of pain. Jesus, he comes and presents. He talks to you, he talks to me this night. It's me. It's Jesus. He came this night to encounter you, to rescue you, to save you. To give you peace, consolement, relief. It's me. Don't fear. I am with you, says the Lord. Lord, powerful in battle. The King of Kings. The nations. Lift up his voice. It is written in the book of Psalms. The Lord of armies is with us. He comes to an archangel. He came to save me. He came to save me this night. He came to take out every anguish and every trouble, every doubt in your heart. Is it God? He's saying to you, it's me. It's Jesus. Because only Jesus can give us what we are looking for. Only Jesus can free us, can cure us this night. And the Bible says, my brethren, that Peter said, Lord, if it's you, <clears throat> take me there to your encounter. He wanted to leave the boat. Jesus didn't tell him to leave the boat. Jonah, he's the one that wanted to leave. Not even the men on the boat want to take out Jonah. But Peter said, if it's you, I'm going to leave this boat. <laughs> Lots of times we're on this situation. I'm going to leave the boat. Now I'm going to walk all alone. If Jesus can walk above the waters, I can also. <coughs> Sometimes the, the man wants to leave the project to his life. The Bible says that church, body of Christ. I'm going to say something else. There is no salvation on the other side of the body. Because the body is the one that's going to be taken to eternity. He wanted to leave some things over there. <coughs> the citizen, our brethren, Moses, not even a nail is going to be left behind because the nail is a part of the body even if no one cares about the nail or if the nail has no value but if the nail is a part of the body then it has a purpose it has value it's a part of the project of his my brother when Jesus was resurrected I'm going to say something about servants of God. When he got resurrected, there were citizens that went to the mark. The women, the servants already saw Jesus. Everybody was reunion in Jerusalem. Jesus said, wait in Jerusalem. Two of them said, they're not going to wait, so they left. And they asked her, why? That Jesus on that day didn't reunion with the people that were in Jerusalem. He didn't stay in Jerusalem. He went to Denmark. Why did those two citizens 
they return to Jerusalem on the moment that Jesus broke the bread. They returned to Jerusalem when Jesus went in the middle of them and said, Peace be with you. You know why? Because on that day, when he parted the bread, those two citizens were there. That's why when Jesus broke the bread, there is significance. He had parted over there. They understand what, you know what? They made it part of the plan, the work of the Lord. They were a part of the body. And the part of the body couldn't be in another city if the rest of the body it was in Jerusalem. And Jesus didn't appear before because the body was incomplete. There was still two. If we walk in the light as others walk in the light, then the Lord will forgive all my sins. And here, he wants to leave. But there was no faith. There was no faith. The interesting thing about faith is that Jesus himself says, you're going to try to come back and find faith. It's faith among others. Jesus goes, says, why didn't you, why did you doubt? Why did I doubt? Well, if Jesus has come, Jesus said, come. He's speaking with you. Come. And he's saying to you this night, come. Don't doubt, come. Come to the Lord. Come to the Lord and find the resting place in His soul, in your souls. Come, you're gonna find peace, relief. But if He says come, you come and continue coming, because the salvation sa sa saves you once, saves you always. Salvation is entering in the path. And walking with the Lord. I'm the truth and I'm the life. No one goes to God if it is through the Lord. That's why he says, come. Come to my presence. Come to the middle. Come receive salvation. Sometimes we have this thing that says, walk a little bit more. You have to walk today and the next day. If someone invite you to walk, you walk too. You have to walk every day with the Lord. That's not what salvation is. Salvation is to walk with the Lord until Jerusalem. It's a walk. It's all. We enter Jerusalem. It's to walk today and the next day till the return of our glorious God, Jesus Christ. This is what salvation is. It isn't a visit, but it's to walk with the Lord. The Bible says that Peter. He didn't have faith to go alone. And he started to a uh, weakness in faith. That's why we need to need the body. The church doesn't save. Who saves is Jesus. But Jesus, he created the church so that he can sustain, so that he can help 
I'm in the church to help, to orientate, to conduce through the Holy Spirit. That's why we're in church. And the, Jesus left the church very much for this. When Jesus saw that there was some in Jerusalem and there's two in the city, he took out them from the city and took them to Jerusalem. When Peter was weak in faith, he picked up Peter and took him into the boat. And when he was in the boat, the Bible says that the wind calmed down. Maybe you're having a little faith tonight. I already passed through this. Something bad is my experience. So the Lord went, picked up, picked me up, and he said, your place is not here, your place is here. Sometimes people ask, why are you at this church? And I say, I don't know. When I open my eyes, I'm already here. The Lord brought me here. And you, my brethren, the Lord has brought you here. The Lord has brought you here. Because here, my brethren, the Lord is here. And Jesus picked up Peter, servant of God. I wanted to walk all alone. When a thing was difficult for him, drowning, like little faith, he picked him up, took him to inside the boat. Why are we saying this tonight? The Lord showed a woman. She needed this to return to the boat. Return her spiritual life to walk with Christ. Probably from doubting. But we disobey. Doesn't, it doesn't matter your situation. What matters is that Jesus loves you. What matters is that for him, you are a part of your church, the faithful church. Is that the Lord wants you in his presence. So that the sea, it can calm down. So that this anguish, this trouble passes away. Inside the boat, everything goes really bad. But with Jesus in the boat, everything goes well. Amen.
though, yeah. For calling us to be here this night. We adore you. Because you have chosen us. You have called us to make true your work, Lord. And one day we'll be in eternity with you. We pray for you for a new land, for a new our salvation, and for the forgiveness of our sins. And for your great mercy, for doing everything in our lives every single day. We bless you, we thank you, Lord, to continue present over our families and our homes, saving us and protecting us and preparing us for your eternity. And for your protection, we pray in the name of Jesus, amen. In your name, for the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, your love, and our good eternal Father, and the good constellations of the Holy Spirit may be poured out upon us for now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our church has reached their end. And whoever wants, you are welcome every day here. Every Tuesday, Church of the Doctrine. Wednesday, Reunion of the Women. Thursday, Church of Prayers. Saturday, Sunday, and Sunday night at 7.30. Everybody is invited to participate in the church. Amen. We don't watch. We participate. If you desire a prayer, This special woman, you raise your hand, and we'll pray for you. so far. 